Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE. I am Savannah Peterson here coming to you from Detroit, Michigan. We're at KubeCon day three, such a series of exciting interviews. We've done over 30, but this conversation is going to be extra special, don't you think, John? Yeah, this is going to be a good one. Grafana Labs is here with us. We're getting the conversation about what's going on in the industry, management, watching the Kubernetes clusters. This is large scale uh, conversations this week. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. He's also got a fantastic Twitter handle, Twitchy H. Please welcome Richie Hartman, who is the Director of Community here at Grafana. Richie, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. How's the show been for you? Busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I, I, In I a have word. a ton of talks at, at KubeCon, like maintainer thing and like the governing board sessions at the TLC panel. I run Prometheus Day, uh, so it's, it's been busy. It, yeah. Monday I didn't have to run anything, that was quite nice. But there <laughs> You, you have your hands in a lot. I'm not even going to cover it looking at your bio. There's, there's so many different things that you're working on. I know that Grafana specifically had some announcements this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah we had quite a few. But like the, the two largest ones is A, uh, we now have a full Kubernetes integration on Grafana Cloud. So our, our approach is generally extremely uh, open source first. So we try to push stuff into the exporters, like into the open source exporters, into mixins, into things which are out there as open source for anyone to use. But that's a little bit like a tool set, not a ready-made solution. Mm -hmm. So um, when we talk integrations, we actually talk about things where you get this like one-click experience. You log into your Grafana Cloud, you click I have a Kubernetes, which probably most of us have, and things just work. Like you ingest the data, you have to write dashboards, you have to write alerts, you have to write everything to just get started mm -hmm. with extremely opinionated dashboards, SLOs, alerts again, all those things made by experts so anyone can use them and you don't have to reinvent the wheel for every single user. So that's the one, the other is... Uh, it's a big deal. Oh yeah, it, it is, yeah. it is. It, it, we, we, invest, we invest heavily in integrations, because while, I mean, I don't have to convince anyone that Prometheus is the de facto standard in everything cloud native, but again, it's, it's, it's sometimes a little bit hard to handle or a little bit not easy to get into, so so smoothing this 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 path onto onboarding yourself onto the stack and onto those types of yes. solutions is what a lot of people need. Because if you if you look at the statistics from KubeCon and we just had this in the governing board session yesterday, yeah, like 60% of the people here are first-time attendees. So there's a lot of people who just come into this thing and who need like this is your path this is where you should be going, or at least if you want to go there, this is how to get there. Here's your runway for takeoff. Yes. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, and I love that you you had those numbers. I was curious, I, I'd seen on Twitter, <laughs> speaking of Twitter, I had seen, <laughs> I had seen that, that there were a lot of people here coming for the first time. You're a community guy. Are we at an inflection point where this community is about to continue to scale? That's a very good question, which I can't really answer. So, I mean, obviously... <laughs> I bet you're going to try. Uh, I, COVID changed a few things. Yeah. Um, probably most people... A couple things. Yeah. I mean, you know, casually. <laughs> it's like such That's a gentle way of putting yeah. that. That was beautiful. I'm going to say yes, it's yeah. going to explode. <laughs> All these new users are going to learn Prometheus. They're going to roll in with you're open pretty, metrics, yeah. open telemetry. I uh, love yes, it. You know. but, but at the same time, uh, like, KubeCon is, is ramping back up. But mm -hmm. if you look at the if you look at the registration numbers between Valencia and, and Detroit, it was more or less the same. Interesting. Uh, which no, so it didn't go onto this onto this full mm -hmm. trajectory, uh, which it was on like up to up to 2019. I expect yeah. this to take up again, but also with the macroeconomic uh, situation, and everything. I I don't think it's. I think the jury's still out on hybrid. I think there's a lot of yeah. more hybrid. Let's see how the projects are going to go. That's what I think is going to be the tell sign. How many people are in participating? How are the projects advancing? Some of the momentum? I mean, from the project level, most of this is online anyway. Of course, that's how open source right, has I mean, been <laughs> working for ages. Of <laughs> course, you don't have any travel budget or, yeah. or any office it's or It's always anything. been that way. Yeah, yeah precisely. So, um, the projects are arguably spearheading this uh, this development and the the online numbers. I, I, I have some numbers in my head, but I'm, I'm not 100% certain though. But um, they are higher for this time in Detroit than in Valencia, as far as I'm aware. So oh. um, that is growing and it's growing in parallel, which also is great because it's much more accessible, much more inclusive. You don't have yeah. to have a budget of at least, let's say, I don't know, two to five K to, to fly over the pond and, and attend this thing. 
um, you can just do it from your home. So that is that's a lot more inclusive. Um, and I expect this to, to basically be a second, more or less orthogonal growth, yeah. uh, growth path. But the best thing about Coupon is the hallway track and just meeting people, yeah. talking to people, and that kind of thing is not really possible it's with great, online. It's great to see people in no, person. No, and it makes yeah. such a difference. I mean, uh, yeah. yeah, even, and interviewing people in person too. I mean, yeah. it does, it, it's, it's and, and this, this whole, I mean, CNCF, this whole community, Every company here is community first. It's how these projects come to be. I think it's awesome. I feel like yeah. you got something exciting to say, yeah. John. And I, and I love some of the advancements. Rich, Richie, we talked last time about you know, open telemetry, open metrics, you're involved in yeah. dashboards. One of the themes here is ease of use. Simplicity, developer productivity. Where do you see the ease of use going from a project standpoint? For me, as you mentioned, everywhere. It's, it's pretty much, it is, it's almost all corners of the world. Yeah. And new people coming in, how, how are you making it easier? What's going on? Give us the update on that. Mm -hmm. So we also, funnily enough, had precisely this topic in the TOC panel just a few hours ago about ease of use and about how to, how to make things easier to, to handle. How developers currently, like if they just want to get into the cloud native scene, they have like, like we, we did some napkin math, like maybe 10 tools at least, which you have to be somewhat proficient in to just get started which is honestly horrendous. Yeah. Uh, of course, like, with a server, I just have my server, I install my thing and it runs. Uh, maybe I need a database, but that's roughly it. Um, and this needs to change again. Like, it, it's nice that everything is, is un unraveled and you, have, you, 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 you don't have those service boundaries which you had before. You can do all the horizontal scaling, you can do all the automatic scaling, all those things that are super nice, but at the same time, this complexity which used to be nicely compartmentalized, was deliberately broken up. Yeah. And so it's becoming a lot harder to, to like we, we need to find new ways to compartmentalize this complexity back to, to human understandable levels again, in particular as we keep onboarding new and new and new and new people. Of course it's just not good use of anyone's time to, to just like learn the basics again and again and again. This is something which should be yeah. just compartmentalized and automated away. We're, the, the we were talking to Matt Klein earlier and he was talking about as projects become mature and all over the place and have reach and, and usage, yes. you got to work on the boring stuff. Yes. And when yeah. it gets boring, that means you have success, <laughs> yes. but then you got to work on the plumbing. <laughs> what Absolutely. are some of the things that you guys are working on? Because people are relying on the product. Oh yeah. So. Um, for, with my Prometheus hat on, um, the highlight feature is uh, exponential or native or sparse histograms. There's like three different names for one single concept. Um, if you know Prometheus, you, ha you currently have hard bucket boundaries where I say my latency is lower or equal two seconds, one second, 100 milliseconds, what have you. And I can put stuff into those histogram uh, buckets accordingly to those predefined levels. Which is extremely efficient, but like on the, on the code level, but it's not very nice for the humans, because you need to understand your system before you're able to, to, to choose good cutoff points. And if you, if, you, if you add new ones, that's completely fine. But if you want to actually change them, because you, you figured out that you made a fundamental mistake, you're going to have a break in the continu continu continuity of your observability data, and you cannot undo this in, into the past. So this is just gone. Native histograms, on the other yeah. hand, allow me to, to <coughs> okay, I'm not going to get, get into the math, but basically you define a single formula, which there comes a good default. If you have yeah. good reasons, then yeah. you can change it, but if you don't, just don't touch if people it. people are in the math, hit them up on Twitter. Twitter H, yeah. get you that <laughs> oh, math. <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing is. People want um, the math, believe me. Oh yeah, I mean. <laughs> we, we don't have time, but yeah. hit them up. Yeah. There's PromCon <coughs> in two weeks uh, in Munich, um, and there will be a whole talk about like the, the dirty details of all of yeah. the stuff. But the, the high level answer is, it just does what people would expect it to do, and with very little overhead, you become, uh, you get highly, highly, uh, or high resolution histograms, which is really important for a lot of use cases. But this is not just uh, Prometheus. Mm -hmm. With my open metrics hat on, the 2.0 feature, like the breaking highlight feature of open metrics 2.0 will be, you guessed it, precisely the same. With my open telemetry hat on, lo and behold, the same underlying technology is being put, or has been put into open telemetry and we've worked for month and month and month and even longer um, between all different projects to, to ascertain that we have one single standard which is actually yeah. compatible with each other. Because 
one of the worst things which you yeah. can have in the cloud native yeah. ecosystem is if you have subtly different things and they break in subtly wrong ways, like it's much better to just not work than to break in a way which is just a little bit wrong because you won't figure this out until it's too late. So we spent, like with all three hats, we spent insane amounts of time on making this yeah. happen and, and making this nice. So, Savannah, one of the things, we have so much going on at KubeCon, I mean just, you're unpacking like probably another day at Cube. We can't go four <laughs> days, but open I know, to I know, I'm open, the same. open <laughs> telemetry. Challenge accepted. Open, yeah. open. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry everyone, we're going to stay here, all the boots are break down. You know. They shut the lights off on us last night. They literally going to pull yeah. the plug on us. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. They've done that before. Uh, it's not the first time. We go until the, they kick us out. We love, <laughs> love doing this. But open telemetry's got a lot of news too, so that's we haven't really talked much about that. We so, haven't at all. So there's a lot of stuff going on that I won't call it boring. That's like code word, that's, that's cube talk for, for it's working. So yeah. it's not bad, but there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Like open telemetry, open metrics. This is the stuff that matters, because when you go in large scale, that's key. It's just like, what, what, we're missing all the, all the stuff. I know. What are we missing? What are people missing? <laughs> What's going on in the show that you think that's not actually being reported on I mean, there's a lot of hype. WebAssembly, for instance, got a lot of hype. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, I'm glad you're asking this because you, you've already mentioned about seven different hats that you wear. I can only <laughs> imagine how many hats are actually in your hat cabinet. But you, you are mm -hmm. someone with your, with your fingers in a lot of different things, so you can kind of give us a state of the union. Yeah, so go ahead. Let's talk about it. So, I think you already hit a few good points. Ease of use is definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and improving the developer experience and not having this like a valley of pain. Yeah. That is one of the really big ones. It's going to be interesting because it is boring, it is janitorial, and it needs a different type of persona. A lot of, or maybe not most, but a large fraction of developers like the shiny stuff. Mm -hmm. And we could see this in Prometheus where like initially the people who contributed this the most were like those restless people who needed to fix that one thing, this is impossible, I'm going to do it. Um, which changed over the years, where uh, the people who now contribute the most are more of the janitorial, like keep things boring, keep things running, still have substantial changes, but but not like more on the maintenance level. Yeah, the maintainers, the, I was just going to bring that yeah, up. On the, on the keep things boring while still pushing them forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing about ease of use is a lot of this is boring, a lot of this is drudgery, a lot of this is toil, a lot of this takes Lots of research, yeah. also in areas where developers are not really good at, like UX, for example, and UI. Like most software developers are really bad at those, because um, they just think differently from normal humans, I guess. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> That's an interesting observation that you just made. I, I, we could unpack that on a whole other show as well. <laughs> so the, the thing is, um, this is going to be interesting for the open source scene. Of course, this needs deliberate investment by companies who assign people to those projects and say, okay, fix that one thing or make it easier to use, what have you. That is a lot easier with, with first party products and projects from companies, because they can invest directly into the thing, and they see much more of a value prop. It's, it's kind of normal by now to, to allow developers or even assign developers onto open source projects. That's not so much the case for the TPMs, for the architects, for the UX and UI yeah. people. Like, for totally. the documentation people, that there's not as much awareness of that this is also driving value yes. for everyone. And also there's not much as yeah, much Yeah, that's a great point. Thing. This whole workflow production system of open source, which has grown and keeps growing, and will keep growing, needs to be funded. And yes. one of the things we were talking earlier in another session about is about the recession potentially we're hitting, and the global issues of macroeconomics that might force some of these projects or companies not to get VC Such funding. Such a theme at the show. So, so to yeah. me, I said it's just not about VC funding. There's other funding mechanisms that's community oriented. There's companies participating. There's other mechanisms. Richie, if you could have your wish list of how things could progress in open source, what would you want to see happen in terms of how, it's, how things are funded, how things are executed? Because developers are going to run businesses, because ultimately, if you follow digital transformation to completion, IT and developers aren't a department serving the business, they are the business, and that's coming, fast. Yeah. What has to happen, in your opinion, if you had the wish, magic wand, what would, you, uh, what, uh, what would you snap your fingers to make happen? If I had a magic wand, that's yes. very different from, from what is achievable, but let, let's okay, go with the go magic with the magic wand first, because okay. we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, okay. we'll okay. riff on that. I'm so, here for dreams. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I've been in open source for more than two decades by now, and most of the open source is being driven forward by people who are not being paid for this. 
So, for example, Grafana is the first time I'm actually paid by a company to do my com community work. It's always been on the side. Of course, I believe in it and I like doing it. I'm also not bad at it. And so I just <laughs> kept doing it, but it was like at yeah. night on the weekends yeah. and everything. And to be honest, it's still at night and in the weekends, but the, the majority of it is during paid company time, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, most of the people who have driven this space forward are not in this position. They're doing it at night, they're doing it on the weekends, mm -hmm. they're doing it out of dedication to a cause yeah, which they Yeah, the commitment is insane. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, you have companies, mostly hyperscalers, and either they have really big cloud offerings or they have really big, ad big advertisement business, or both, um, and they're extracting a huge amount of value which has been created in large part elsewhere. Like, yes, they employ a ton of developers, but a lot of the technologies they build on and the shoulders of the giants they stand upon are really poorly paid. And there are some efforts to like, uh, I think the core foundation, uh, like which redistribute a little bit of money and such. But if I had my magic wand, everyone who is an open source and actually drives things forwards get, I don't know, 20% of the value which they create just magically, somehow, yeah. or uh, or other companies don't extract as much value and, and redistribute more, like put more full-time engineers onto projects or whichever, like that would be the ideal state where the people who actually make the thing out of dedication are not more or less <coughs> left on the sideline. Yeah. Of course, they're too dedicated to just say, okay, I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah you figure this stuff out and let things crumble and falter. So, I mean, it's like with nurses and such who, yeah. who just like, they, they know they have something which is important and they keep doing it because they believe in it. I think, this, I think this is an opportunity to start me messaging this narrative because yeah, absolutely. now we're at an inflection point where there's a big community, there is a shared <laughs> responsibility, in my opinion, to not spread the wealth, but make sure that it's equally balanced. And, and, the, and I think there's a way to do that. I don't know how yet, but I see that more than ever, it's not just come in, raid the kingdom, steal all the jewels, monetize it, and throw some token, well, and token the, money around. And the burnout, uh, yeah. I mean, I, the other thing that I'm thinking about too is it, it's, you know, it's, it's, the, it's the financial aspect of this, it's the cognitive load, and I'm curious, I actually want to ask you this question, how do you avoid burnout? You do a million different things, and we're, you know, I'm sure the open source community, that passion. He codes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> Just write code. It's, um, oh, well, my, my, my software engineering days are firmly over. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm the cat herder and the janitor and like this type of thing. I, I don't really write code anymore. <laughs> How do you avoid burnout? Uh, so A, I, I didn't, of course I had burnout a few years ago. Uh, it was not nice. Um, but that was still when I had like a full day job and that day job was super intense and on top I did all the things. Yeah. Um, part of being honest, a lot of the people who do this are really dedicated um, and are really bad at setting boundaries between work and That's private why I bring life. it up. Yeah. Literally why I bring I, it up, yeah. I, I, I'm firmly in that area and I'm, I'm, I don't claim I have this fully figured out yet. Um, it's also even more risky to some extent, because like, it's, it's good if you're paid for this and you can do it during your work time, but on the other hand, if it's so nice and like, if your hobby and your job are almost completely intersection, That's it becomes great. really The hard. lines are blurry. Yeah, and then you yeah, like have, have work from home. You, you don't even commute anything or anymore, you just sit down at your computer and you just have fun doing your stuff. And all of a sudden it's deep at night and you're still like, I want to keep going. Um, <laughs> Sounds like so. us on the queue. I know, I was <laughs> going to say, I was like, passion is something we all have in common here yeah, on this that's the key, That is the key point. There is a, the, the passion project becomes the job, but now the contribution is interesting because now yeah. this ecosystem is, is, has a commercial aspect. Again, yeah. this, is the, this is the balance between commercialization and keeping that organic yeah. production system that's called open source. I mean, it's so fascinating, and this is amazing. I want to continue that conversation, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is great. Richie, this entire conversation has been excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. How can people find you? I mean, I give me your Twitter handle, but if they want um, to find out more about Grafana, Prometheus, and the 17 other things you do. Um, <laughs> for Grafana, grafana.com. For Prometheus, prometheus.io. For my own stuff, uh, github slash richieh slash talks. Of course, I track all my talks in there, and like, yeah. I don't. I currently don't have a personal website because I stopped bothering. But yeah. my like that repository is is where you can find what I do over. Like for example, the recording link will be uploaded to yeah. this. 
GitHub. Uh, yeah. You got a great following, time. you also run a lot of events, you're in a lot of community activity. Oh, yeah. Congratulations, Roy. So you also, I talked about this last time, the largest IRC network on earth you ran, built a data center from scratch. What <laughs> haven't you done? That you too. haven't done that, you haven't built a cloud, a hyperscale to compete with Amazon. What? That's uh, the next one, why don't you put that on I, your plate? We'll be sure to feature whatever <laughs> Richie does next here on theCUBE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm game. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, Thanks. on Great that note, Richie, again, thank you so much for being here. John, always a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in to us here live from Detroit, Michigan, on theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, and here's to hoping that you find balance in your life this weekend. <laughs>